So by this point, many of you have already heard that women are set to be drafted into the United States military. This is a big change. The ruling actually came out years ago where they found that the male-only draft was unconstitutional. There's a lot of fights happening on social media right now. And in Congress, the, basically the Senate actually did vote 22 to 3 to actually to have women drafted. And that was a bipartisan effort by both Republican senators and Democrat Democratic senators. And, you know, in the Senate, they only the Democrats only have a one seat lead, which is nothing, absolutely nothing. So it was bipartisan. And the Supreme Court has essentially given Congress time to basically either draft women or end the draft entirely. They cannot end the draft at this point. Every year, 100,000 Gen Zers are avoiding the draft. They are not signing up for it, which is the reason why they also have another bill that already passed in the House that will automatically, it will automatically si sign Gen Zers up for the draft when they turn 18 because they're not signing up on their own. And now this bill will include women and it's set to pass very, very soon, evidently. So this is very, very serious. There's some more information out there. We're going to be checking out a video from Greedy Soldier. I mentioned him in my last video, but we weren't able to jump into it because we had to cover so much regarding the topic. So we're going to jump in it here. Also, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members of the channel do get new videos early. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. So we're going to jump into the into Greedy's channel, into his video, uh, the Greedy Soldier's video. He's going to talk more about this phenomenon, and I'm going to link him in the description so you can go and check his channel out. But this is really insane stuff. Well, guys and gals, looks like you better lace up your boots and get your war faces on because they are bringing back the draft. One age-old issue is re-emerging, whether the U.S. should have a military draft. The military draft coming back, according to one expert. With uh, Ukraine and Russia, uh, you know, Israel being attacked brutally by Hamas uh, back on October 7th, and of course China. It's becoming a national security issue, the military not reaching recruitment goals to refill the ranks. Trump orbiters are musing about the possibility of mandatory military service should the former president and Republican presidential nominee get elected for another term. If you have been active on social media or you've been paying attention even a little bit to the news, you probably will have noticed that a lot of talk has been circled around the draft coming back in 2025. And that's mainly because it's a very clickbaity topic, all right? I mean, you obviously clicked on this video, whether you're a loyal subscriber or not. You saw the title and you thought it was going to be interesting enough to click on it and see what it's all about. But I'm here to dispel those rumors for you so that you have the down and dirty truth of what's really going on. House passes bill to automatically register young men for the draft. The House passed a large defense bill Friday evening that included a provision that would automatically enroll young men between the ages of 18 and 26 for the selective service. The House's version of the National Defense Authorization Act, or the NDAA, which would authorize $895 billion in military spending, which is, I think, almost $10 billion more than last year's NDAA, passed by a vote of 217 to 199. It's unlikely to be picked up by the Democratic-controlled Senate because of numerous amendments regarding abortion, diversity efforts, and transgender medical treatments. We talked about that on my last video where I do believe that they are trying to cut these programs in order to find money to be able to pay the junior enlisted troops more. The selective service provision, though, is part of an enduring bipartisan effort to keep the framework for military conscription in place, even though the draft ended in 1975. Automatic registration would replace the coming-of-age tradition that all 18-year-old male U.S. citizens experience when they get a card in the mail from Uncle Sam informing them that they are required under threat of criminal penalties to register for the selective service. And that's been true for a long time, guys. I think it's been roughly 50 years. I, don't quote me on that. I want to say it's been around 50 years where that has been the reality, okay? Whether you knew that or not, once you turned 18 and if you were male in the United States, you were supposed to 
register for the selective service, which is essentially the, the draft system. And if you didn't do that, there's technically criminal penalties for not doing it. And I think that's where a lot of confusion on this topic is coming from. I think there's a lot of people out there that didn't realize that the selective service system was actually something that already existed, nor do I think that they knew that they were already required to register for it. The House's version of the 2025 National Defense Authorization Act does say that males aged 18 to 26 will be automatically enrolled into selective service. But that was something that you were supposed to be doing anyway. And the House's reasoning for doing this to make it automatic is to make it easier on the citizens and also to save money with marketing and sending out uh, reminders to actually register for the selective service system. They anticipate saving a lot of money on that by just making it automatic. So not really a big deal if you really think about it. In fact, it just kind of makes things a little easier. I mean, if you're you're really mad about being registered for the selective service system, that's something you should have been mad about a long time ago. Now, another big point of contention out there that I know is sparking just tons of controversy, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of you in the comments section that talk about this once I bring it up, is that there was also a proposal by the House in the NDAA executive summary that states that there should be registration for women. So now women are held to the same standard. They also are required to register for the selective service system and would also be enrolled automatically, along with the men, ages 18 to 26. And the Republican controlled House's reasoning on this is to increase that equality, you know, that thing that we've been talking about for the last 10 to 20 years now, and also to potentially double the selective service pool if it ever was needed which is pretty significant, right? So now if there ever was a draft, we would have double the numbers to pull from to cover down. By using available federal databases, the Selective Service Agency will be able to register all the individuals required and thus help ensure that any future military draft is fair and equitable. This will allow us to rededicate resources, basically that means money, towards readiness and towards mobilization, rather than towards education and advertising campaigns driven to register people. So again, they're anticipating that they'll save a lot of money if they make this an automatic thing. So now most of these headlines are pretty misleading, okay? We've talked about this before. This is all just the House's version of the 2025 NDAA. Now the Senate also gets a vote in the 2025 NDAA and their version, their draft version, doesn't include any verbiage like this. The National Defense Authorization Act is a must-pass bill, right? It has to get approved no matter what, every year. But it has to get hashed out appropriately and everybody has to agree upon the contents before it actually goes up to the White House for signature. And even once it gets that far, if the president doesn't like what they see, they can always kick it back. So what the headlines are being now, they're really exploiting the House's version of the 2025 NDAA. And they're not really talking too much about the Senate's version because they know for a fact that once the Senate sees what the House has put forth for their version of the NDAA, a lot of it's gonna get kicked back. Right now our House is controlled majority by Republicans and the Senate is opposite. It's controlled majority by Democrats. Obviously that in itself results in a lot of conflicting views, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Because we are a checks and balances system. So that is the nature of it. It's actually supposed to work that way. So even though in the House's version, they wanna have automatic registration of men and women to the selective service system age 18 to 26, that doesn't mean that that's actually what's gonna happen. That's just what's gonna be brought forth to the chambers and then everybody's gonna discuss it. And you know, there's a pretty good chance that it won't happen. Now here's the thing. He's, that's just his belief. The House bill actually only, on, the, the House version of the bill only actually just wants to register men 18 through 26. So he, he actually made a mistake there. 18 through 26, and they passed that version of the bill. Only they only want to register men 18, 18 through 26 for the draft. It's the Senate that's and the House is controlled by the Republicans. It's the Senate that's controlled by the Democrats that actually passed the bill already. And already passed the bill on their end already, saying that women should be registered for the uh, women should be registered should be forced to register for the draft. And the House bill has already gone to the Senate. So what's going to happen is they're going to have to resolve it and more than likely they will take those two bills, put them together and make just one bill that says both men and women will have to register for the, will have, will automatically be registered for the draft. And it's like, there's a lot of the naysayers saying, this will never happen. There's no way men are going to be automatically registered for the draft. There's no way women are going to be automatically registered for the draft. It's not happening. Guys, 
our military reserves are only one tenth of what they were 50 years ago. 50 years ago, we had over 700,000 reservists. Today, we have roughly 70,000. Even though our population has substantially increased in the United States over the last 50 years, our military reserves have fallen. You heard me, fallen down to 10% of what it was. We can no longer protect ourselves. To make matters worse, 77% of Gen Z have been found to be completely not eligible to serve in the military because of either substance abuse issues, obesity, or mental health issues. They are not mentally sound enough to to serve. And then on top of that, 100,000 Gen Zers every year that are turning 18 are not registering for the draft either. Okay? I've already said it, that when it comes to these people, if the recruiter comes looking for them, you know, if they come looking for these people to come and get them, they will be in their parents' basements sleeping and farting after a long night of drinking, smoking weed, and playing Call of Duty. And that's just the reality of it. So they have to take actions very quickly right now because if they don't, there's not going to be anyone to protect the country. So they're basically going to go after the best and brightest that they can. There's a lot of people who seem to think that they're going to be able to get out of this. That's not the case. Women have advanced degrees today. And as a result of that, many of them, those ser- those those skill sets will be needed. There was a There's a woman on the channel. She's a new commenter, Jacqueline. She's a school principal. I believe she has a master's degree. She's currently working on her PhD. She's a Gen Zer, 27 year old. She also she's a, an accomplished uh, boater, so she knows how to sail. She has her own boat. She can sail. She knows how to desalinate weight water. She has a, quite a few skill sets. She's clearly high IQ, extremely intelligent, very consistent. You know, and you know she this and you know she on one of my videos where I discussed this already. New law will, will automatically draft women to war. She basically says, well, if seventy percent of Gen Z supposedly has mental health problems and can't serve. That doesn't make me feel very good about my prospects of not being drafted. And I responded to her with your advanced education, skill sets, and proven track record of consistency. They will come and get you while you're at work. You pull the bus, pull the the bus that takes people straight to basic training right up in front of your, your school. And a bunch of men in military uniforms, not a single woman with them will be marching inside your place of employment, that's the school that she works at as a principal, to let you know that it's time to serve your country. All the while, most other Gen Zers will be at home sleeping and farting after a long night of drinking, smoking weed, and playing Call of Duty. Like I said earlier, this is not a good situation. This is 100% not a good situation. So they need to they need to basically refill those numbers and they need a lot of qualified individuals. So by automatically registering these people from the draft, they will have a list of qualified individuals that they can choose from and force these people to go and serve. And you know, of course the government knows that no one wants to serve. So when it comes to these individuals like Jacqueline, like I said, they're not going to they won't even just go to their house. They'll go to their place of employment. Okay, they will go to their place of employment and they will go and get them. And they're not dealing with crim- with the typical criminal like a Gen Zer. Most Gen Zers are criminals. Jacqueline is not a criminal. She is a distinguished member of society. So she's not going. She's basically just going to have to do as she's told. They are the average average Gen Zer. There's not much you can really do with these scumbags. But in the case where you have someone who is who's distinguished, highly educated, very consistent, she's just going to basically have to get on the bus. And that's all there is to it. And so, so this is this is really what they're looking for. What the reason why they are passing this thing is so they can basically automatically register people like her and get the best of the best from the best of the worst. Because Gen Z is a very bad generation. They are a bunch of really awful muffins. Okay, you know they came out of the oven. They came out of the oven looking just just terrible. And really, it's like we need to throw away and start all over again. 
By the way, guys, I have another channel called Men Walking Away. If you're enjoying the content on this channel and you want even more of this content, consider checking out the Men Walking Away channel. It's linked in the description of the video. What do you guys think regarding this, regarding all of this? The U.S. military draft in 2025 will include women, all right? This bill is going to pass. I think it is going to pass. But, I mean, because if they don't pass it, if women are not drafted, we already know that the male-only draft is unconstitutional. It's found unconstitutional in federal court, and the Supreme Court has been allowing the Biden administration to uh, the Congress to uh, to basically either get rid of the male-only draft, which is unconstitutional, or draft women. So if they don't do it within a reasonable amount of time, it's already been about five to seven years, if they don't get it done or four to seven years, if they don't get it done soon, then the Supreme Court will just basically say, okay, we've given you plenty of time. You haven't gotten it done. So guess what? Now the mail-only draft is unconstitutional. You may need to go and reamend the Constitution just to bring the draft back. They don't want that scenario, and they're well aware of it, especially right now. They cannot afford a situation where the Supreme Court rules that the male-only draft is unconstitutional, and now they have to go back, pass a tons of additional legislation, go against a society that already views the draft as bad. No matter, men are not going to support the draft. So if they have to go and get public support to re to, you know, pass new legislation to bring back the draft after the Supreme Court knocks it down because they did not draft women, it's going to be a living nightmare. And they can't, and guys, they can't even, they cannot even find enough people to, to, uh, to work in space force, space force. All right. It sounds cool, but it's they can't even find enough people to do Space Force. Like that's 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 literally how bad it is right now. Okay? And the average the average Gen Zer is, is just not getting the, the average Gen Zer is just not qualifying because they're not they're they're not too bright and you know they have a lot of mental health issues. There was one Gen Zer who basically reached out to me and he said, he said, I'm you know, regarding this new law. He said, I'm Gen Z, Christian. He said, I'm Gen Z, and I actually tried to enlist in the Space Force in either 2021 or 29, 2022. I forget, but they wouldn't take me, even though I don't use drugs or have mental health issues other than mild ASD, which is autistic spectrum, this autistic spectrum disorder. So this guy has autism, and they rejected him from Space Force with autism, yet they cannot even meet their uh, they can't they can't even meet their recruitment guidelines. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts on all of this. We'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA. Men walking away and share.